You lucky, lucky people. You get to have an extra special quick take this week. More of Muggins here yabbering in finely modulated BBC English about stuff happening over in Yarl's America land. How are you doing? Because yes, we're talking the congressional hearings that took place yesterday. Hence me dressed up like this, ready to do battle. These hearings that took place yesterday, they were chaired by Maxine Walters, chairwoman of the House Financial Services Committee. And she invited a select group of voices from a surprisingly narrow range of the cryptocurrency spectrum. But this is who was selected to present the very best of us in front of Congress. So we had Jeremy Allaire, CEO of Circle, Sam Batman fried CEO of FTX, Brian Brooks, CEO of Bitfury, Chad Cascarilla, CEO of Paxos, Danelle Dixon, the CEO of Stellar <coughs> Development Foundation, and Alessia Haas, the CEO of Coinbase Inc., and the CFO of Coinbase Global Incorporated. In her opening statement, Maxine Walters acknowledged the degree to which regular citizens and pension funds or major institutional players have begun introducing digital currencies into their investment portfolios. Americans are increasingly making financial decisions using digital assets every day. Even some pension funds are beginning to invest in cryptocurrencies on behalf of retirees, despite the track record of volatility of cryptocurrencies as investments. The pandemic has also continued uh, to, to contribute to working families looking for alternatives to rebuild their nest egg by investing in cryptocurrency. But she also recognized that the moment was fast approaching for the US government to act on creating structures for these activities to proceed safely. Currently, cryptocurrency markets have no overarching or centralized regulatory framework, leaving investments in the digital aspect space vulnerable to fraud, manipulation, and abuse. So look, the normal stance from those of us in the crypto space is to assume regulators in Congress don't know Jack and aren't prepared to meet us in the middle. But this isn't the sense I get from watching the hearing. I wouldn't say quite the opposite, but it's near the opposite. There is an overt and clear recognition that the world has already changed, that the rules are already being rewritten, and that the US wants to be the ones wielding the pen. This is Congressman Patrick McHenry of North Carolina who followed Maxine Walters. This technology is already regulated. Now, the regulations may be clunky, they may not be up to date. I ask my friends, my policymaker friends here on the Hill, this question. Do you know enough about this technology to have a serious debate? Now, if the answer is no, then we need to first seek to understand to build up that understanding of this new technology so we can have a serious debate on what, how we appropriately respond and update regulations and perhaps laws. But I should be clear, the goal today is to listen, learn, and ask questions. This technology is new and exciting. It promises a new direction for financial economies, services, and products. I further ask this question, though, how do we make sure, as American policymakers, that this cryptocurrency revolution, this technology revolution, happens in the US and not overseas? There are a lot of questions we have to answer. But of course, we need reasonable rules of the road. We know that. We don't need knee-jerk reactions by lawmakers to regulate out of fear of the unknown rather than seeking to understand. And that fear of the unknown um, and the move to regulate before understanding uh, will only stifle American ingenuity and put us at a competitive disadvantage. So what followed was four hours of testimony from the assembled heroes of the cryptocurrency space, and there in the middle of it all was Sam Bankman fried SBF, the richest person in crypto, according to Forbes. And Sam repeatedly lent into his firm's risk assessment tools and protocols for understanding what was actually going on on the platform, all while demonstrating some serious pen-eye coordination skills. We've been operating for a number of years with billions of dollars of open interest. We've never had customer losses, um, clawbacks, or um, anything like that, um, even going through periods of large movements in both directions. Now for all of that, and all of Sam's deep understanding of what's going on, Twitter seemed to be only obsessed with one thing, simply the message Sam's sartorial engineering was communicating. Behold the shoelaces.
But if we're talking of hand-eye skills, Richie Torres, congressman for New York's 15th district, which mainly covers the South Bronx, gave one of the most positive spins on stable coins yet, all seemingly while playing a game of table tennis. One of my concerns about crypto is that it would present a challenge to the supremacy of the US dollar as the world's reserve currency. But what I have found striking is that the leading stablecoin issuers have actually chosen to peg their stablecoins to the dollar, which strikes me as a vote of confidence that reinforces rather than challenges the status of the dollar as the world's reserve currency. Richie Torres is 33, he's young, he's concerned with alleviating the cost of remittances for immigrant communities in his districts, and he seemed genuinely excited to hear how the best of this technology could impact the lives of his constituents. Compare this though with Brad Sherman, Congressman for California's 30th district, who produced the most shareable, memeable take of the session, demonstrating full boomer grasp with both shit coins and the ability to read a prepared set of notes. The number one threat to crypto currency is crypto. Bitcoin could be displaced by Ether, which could be displaced by Dodge, which could be displaced by Hamster Coin. And then there's Cobra Coin. And what could Mongo's coin do to crypto coin? But before you rush to judgment on Brad and how out of touch he is, the bald eagle actually prefaced this with some very sharp remarks on the dangers of the structures that crypto is supposedly upending, being instead repeated once again by those whose timeliness, i.e. being early, has led to wealth, has led to power, has led to influence, and led to, well, exactly nothing new. And yes, he mentions Tether repeatedly. Crypto is many different things. Cryptocurrency is an incredibly volatile investment that aspires to be a currency that might displace or at least compete with the dollar. A stable coin aspires to be incredibly stable and is tied to the dollar. What they share is a culture, a vibe, a stick it to the man moniker, a belief that somehow this is new and hip, and an attack on the powers of society. But the fact is that the, ad, the, the advocates of crypto represent the powers in our society. Uh, um, the powers in our society on Wall Street and in Washington have spent millions and are trying to make billions or trillions in the crypto world. These include Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Visa, BlackRock, Citadel, Musk, and Zuckerberg. Not to mention the CEOs that are before us here today. Uh, everyone before us today is a crypto advocate. We will at some point hear from the crypto critics. We won't hear from CEOs. We'll hear from academics with their pencils and Pens. Today we hear from the CEOs with their lobbyists, their PACs, and their power. And we wonder why we won't be able to protect investors. Um, the regulators need to listen to this hearing very carefully. With all the money and power on one side, we will not be able to pass meaningful legislation. Don't cop out and say, well, you're not going to do anything until we pass meaningful legislation. And if you wonder about where the power is, Zuckerberg had to come here himself and sit there. Brian Armstrong sent his number two, and Tether doesn't bother to show up at all. Zuckerberg did not have a day in the park. He did not enjoy it, but he had to come. Armstrong didn't, and Tether ain't here at all. So just you watch out because academics with their pencils, pencils, and pens. And Hi everyone. Pencils, pencils, and pens. This is Charles Hoskinson. Yes, academics with their with their pencils and, and their pens. Hey, watch out. They're coming for us. Ooh, so scary. So this session was four and a half hours long. There wasn't really anything new being said on either side, but if there's a takeaway, it's this. It's that feeling of inevitability. For the longest time, it's been straightforward for those in power to simply dismiss crypto out of hand, but now the debate is being forced into the public eye and will continue to be. And it's DeFi that's arguably forced this to happen. Now, DeFi has for so long been the weird, quirky, circle jerky, fingernearing nerdgasm on the fringes of the space, but now it's front and center and everyone is buying tissues. And isn't that fun?
That's it for today. Enjoy the rest of your week. Peace out, all of that good stuff. Get subscribed. 92.1 thousand subscribers. Are you one of them? If you're not, get subscribed. I will see you on the ice. No, I won't. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.